Hey guys, what's up? So, this channel is about, um, you know, personality disorders, mental disorders, like explaining it. Um, I've had a lot. <laughs> um, I've healed a lot. I've learned the symptoms of what they say you have. And I was able to take that and use it as how I see myself or see myself about to go do something. And I'm like, yeah, no, we're not doing that because we're not doing that anymore. The thing is, is that okay, I have a huge thing with freaking the, the, you know, big pharma and the whole medication and that whole industry. So when you are believe something, it happens. It's law of attraction. Like attracts like, okay. If you're a kid and something happens and they say, oh, she has bipolar. Oh, she has anxiety. Oh, she has PTSD problems. Oh, she has depression. If you really didn't and then you were just like going through a phase as a kid or they just didn't get to the actual root of the problem, which is what they do. Like, childhood trauma literally is the same exact symptoms of ADHD. Like, think about it. You zone out because when you're at home and your parents are fighting or something, like, you zone out. You don't want to be in that reality. You want to not be there. You know what I mean? So it's the same kind of things um, with ADHD. Like, hypervigilant. Like, you know what I mean? So... The kid could have nothing, and he, they're just going through a bunch of shit, and instead of going through that and looking through that, they're just being like, okay, medication, here we go. And now we're taking away medication and population control, you know, people that are on certain things, and that's what they rely on, and they don't have them anymore, are most likely going to go out and try to find that feeling of relief. And here we go with the ODs and pandemic, epidemic, whatever you want to say. So that's why I'm, uh, this channel is what it is. Because you don't have that problem. Like, they labeled you into having that. Like, do you literally realize that doctors are the ones that control your stability? I, my doctor wanted to take me off medication recently. Not a good idea. Not a good idea at all. Not a good idea. It made me go into such a depression. And I had shit going on at the same time. Oh my God. Literally, this, this woman, I almost said, yeah. This, my doctor, right? She thinks she knows. I've gotten in a fight with her about her trying to convince me that there's long lasting effects on medication and because I was fighting her on it and I was telling her I didn't agree with her she ended up telling me I was an addict and all this shit I literally was so polite and I was just like I don't think that's very professional to tell your client that they're an addict when they're not I'm gonna get off the phone because I'm gonna flip out right now so bye anyways this is a woman that's in charge of my stability okay so I was going through, um, it wasn't even a manic, she thought I was going through a manic, um, episode, because I was stressed out that I had 26 bunnies, and I didn't know what the fuck to do with it, and I missed my appointment, because I was gonna be late anyways, but I still called to let them know, it's not like I just disappeared, you know what I mean, like, I did everything responsible that I was supposed to do, and because I was so high, like, strong on stress she thought I was having a manic episode and so she's like okay well I think you're having too many stimulants and we're gonna take you off you know 150 milligrams of Wellbutrin and I take 450 I don't know so she took me off it and I was like is that's not a good idea like I'm telling you right now like that's not a good idea and she's like, well, and I'm like, no, we can do it. Let's go. Like, I'm just letting you know it's not a good idea. And I will be calling you when I go crazy. 
well, not crazy. I, I will call you when I start feeling a certain type of way and you have to put me back on my medication. <laughs> like, but I'll go with you. You're the doctor. You know what I mean? Such a bad idea. So bad. And I let it continue. Like, I didn't call. I just let it go and go. And I'm like, maybe it's my Wellbutrin. Like, maybe it's because I don't have it. She was on vacation. I couldn't even get a hold of her. So I had to go through another doctor there, which before I've had to deal with him with Wellbutrin before too. So it was kind of funny. Anyways, when you are believe something, that's your belief. It comes true. So if you're a kid, again, and you're told you have bipolar, you have this, you have that, you're going to go with it. You're going to take the medication. This is the thing, though. If you don't have any of that and you start taking medication and you're being told that you have bipolar, your brain will literally form and mold into believing that you have that chemical imbalance of bipolar or depression, whatever it is, neuroticism, you know what I mean? Like your brain will literally move the chemicals and, and make you believe that you need that medication. And now you do because you believe it, but you're a kid. You don't know, right? Just saying. What the point of this channel is, it's called You Are Not Broken. A lot of core ideas, um, core beliefs are, you know, I'm not worthy, I'm not enough, I'm bad, I'm damaged, I'm broken, um, you know, all that stuff. And I'll go over that um, in videos, you know, like attachment styles and love language and how you know, um, attachment styles happen because <clears throat> they're formed as kids because it goes by our caregivers. It goes by everything else. Um, so because of my experiences and what I've learned and what I've went through with my kid, my, fa my ex, my, like everything, my, my own like childhood, like, yeah, like shit that I've been going through right now has been such progress. Like, I was already at a point, but, like, I got to a point where I'm like, huh, yeah, you know what? No more. No more personality disorders. No more mental pun. No, no, no. I'm done. Like, I'm done with all of you. I still should take the medication because my brain is still codependent on it. I didn't ask for that. Just letting you. I had to tell my doctor that, too. I'm like, you know, I didn't ask for this, right? It's not like I was trying to be dependent on medication, wasn't my idea. I was put on it when I was 12 because I was trying to commit suicide and my parent, my mom and her boyfriend, uh, uh, he's dead now, so whatever. But I don't mean it like that, just like, fuck it. But fuck it anyways, even if he was alive. Whatever. Forgiven, not forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. It's not easy. Um can be easy, actually. I'm not... See, that's a belief. I just said it's not easy. Why can't it be? Why can't it be easy? Why? Ask yourself. If you say can't, ask yourself why. Why can't it be? There's a million possibilities in the universe. There's so many things that have manifested in my life recently, and I never thought it would manifest that way, and that's how it happens. So you have to let go of the outcome and what you want and what you think is good for you and surrender so the universe can actually give you better to what you want in a better outcome. But if you hold on to that and you have to grab it so tight and have the control out of fear, out of whatever, it's not going to be fun. <laughs> like you need to let go because... If you don't let go, you're going to keep having tower moments if you were doing tarot. Like, the universe is going to be like, okay, keep going. Let's keep going until you freaking do what we're trying to make you do. <sighs> yeah. So that's what this channel is about. Um, it's just, it. we're going we're gonna to work on reversing what the doctors have told us. That's pretty much what this channel is about, is that I'm going to help you guys reverse all the mental fucking bullshit 
that is put in your head that you have. It's all mental. Everything is in your mind. Your subconscious is everything. Your subconscious is what creates your reality. So when we're told, or when we feel like we're not worthy as kids, our inner child is literally what controls us as adults, because those are our beliefs that we have took with us growing up. So if your subconscious mind believes to a T that you are you feel that you are not worthy, which you got from a kid growing up, all that like download, okay, think of it as a computer. Think of your subconscious mind as a computer, okay? All the files are in there, right? And it's data and it's being saved as memories. And so when you don't understand something that's going on, your subconscious mind is going to pick something out of your past because that's familiar. That's what it is. That's what you've been through. That's what how you think. But does it serve you or does it hurt you? That's what That's what you have to, to ask yourself. Does this thought or belief serve me or does it hurt me? And do I actually believe it or did I hear it from somebody else? Your thoughts are not you. <laughs> Your heart. Yeah, wait, just wait, Dawson. Okay, sorry. Your thoughts are not yours. Your mind, your, your mind, you need to follow your heart. You need to have heart and mind coherency where they align with how they think and how you feel. Because a lot of people self-sabotage you in relationships. Like, they are fucking in love with them. But your head tells you that sabotage it. And it's, un it's subconscious. Like, you don't even realize. Like, your brain is just like, this is danger, this is danger, this is danger. Because you're, you don't want to be loved. You don't want to be loved because you feel unworthy. You feel unworthy. It's not familiar. So your subconscious brings up what's familiar, okay? So if you have a past of bad relationships and you're scared of love, your your heart and your brain aren't going to be aligned. There's going to be an imbalance, which is going to make it not work, <laughs> you know? And if you do align, see, this is the thing. If you align with a person and you're not okay, that person is not okay, because when you align with somebody, it means that you're, like, on the same page. Like, you're feeling the same shit. Like, so if you feel like shit, and all of a sudden, like, you meet up with somebody, they're going to feel like shit, too. <laughs> like, or they're going through something that feels like shit. But usually it's certain things, like, if you're going through that, you're aligning with something that they're going through that aligns with you. So anyways, your thoughts are not your thoughts. It's your mind creating things that it knows. So if you can literally listen to your thoughts, listen to what your thoughts are, and think to yourself, who is that? Who is that? Who is that talking? Who, who, where did I get, where did I get that belief from? Who told me that? You know, like, your mom tells you don't touch a stove because it's hot. It's it's something like that. Like, and with a computer, you have all that data that's saved your memory from your entire life. So that's where your subconscious goes to when it's not familiar with something. That's why the unknown is so unexpected because you don't you you don't know what's gonna happen. It's unfamiliar. It's scary, you know. So. Dawson coming in just, like, totally, like, caught me off guard. Um, yeah, so the data. It's like, you don't want to feel a certain type of feeling, but if you click on one of those folders, it's going to pop up. So if you're getting triggered, and that trigger already knows how it feels from another trigger, whatever situation, that's what the folder is going to come up, and you're going to feel. So you don't want to click on the folder, but you still do it's like a mistake, you know what I mean? So it's like you have to have that heart heart and mind concern, con, coherency, whatever. He really did mess my, uh, okay. But hold on, that's a belief. Hold on. 
So if you can put the heart, mind. So we're going to talk about mental disorders and personality disorders. And there's a lot. And there's attachment styles. And there's, there's so many, like, cluster fucks and, like, of certain individual, like, groups of mental disorders, personality disorders, but I'm going to teach you about them as well. I'm not going to just sit here and be like, hey, today we're going to learn, we're going to take away your freaking, I don't know, attachments, whatever, like, something, um, but yeah, that's what the channel's about. I'm sorry that I was, like, in my groove and then he just came in, so, <sighs> whatever. Um, it can be a confidence thing, too, um, depending on how far this, you know, channel goes. You can talk about Q&As on certain things and have group chats and, um, I can actually do, I'm trying to, like, get tarot cards for, like, kids. Because everybody is, like, doing relationships. It's like, I care about kids. I want to know how the kids are feeling. Like, I don't care. Like, whatever happens, happens in my relationships. You know what I mean? Like, I care about my kid. So, I'm trying to find tarot cards that you can do for the energy of your kids. Which you can do normal ones, but I want to do something different. Um, and I have a lot of uh, CBT, DBT, um, tapping work. Um meditation, hypnosis, subliminals, affirmations, but affirmations, you aren't what they are. Um, we're gonna, like, get out of the subliminals that are around the world that we are being told that is just bullshit, and they're trying to make us pretty much robots and control us, and people aren't seeing it, and they don't want to see it, and it's the more energy, everything's energy, Energy, frequency, vibration, look up Nikola, Te Nikola Testa, it's true. So, law of attraction, whatever you're thinking, whatever you want in your, how you're thinking about it is how you're, is what's going to happen. Like, if you think that your boyfriend or girlfriend is cheating on you and they're literally not, they're eventually gonna, because you will manifest it. It's crazy. So if you're feeling shit, feeling like shit about an interview and you thought it went bad, and you're feeling like, oh my god, or you have that fear, that's going to manifest. So it's like, that's where it, it, this channel is going to help be able to, it's going to switch law of attraction. I've, I've, I've learned and in, in made up my own kind of therapy in law of attraction, like, because if you have to flip it, because everybody's like, oh, be happy, be happy. It's like, People think they have personality disorders. Like, how is it happy? Like, it's not that happy sometimes. I mean, it's not that easy sometimes. And they're like, okay, pull yourself out. It's not that easy sometimes. Like, so you fear a lot of stuff. So I've, like, reversed it. Like, you can use the fear in order to manifest what you want. Because you flip it. I'll explain it better. But, yeah, I have so much. Like, life coach, like, sex sex therapist, like, all that stuff, so we're gonna have fun, um, yeah, I had a lot of, I was gonna do this anyways, but the reason why I, like, legit did it was because, oh my god, my day, okay, astrology, we're, like, literally in eclipse season right now, and we just had, like, a new moon in Sagittarius, <laughs> my eclipse season, can I just tell you? I can't. Like, my life, and I don't want to say this because I don't want to manifest it, but my life has always been, like, you can't make this shit up. And you can't. Everybody has told me I need, I need a reality TV show since middle school. I don't know. I don't know. One thing we are going to do, though, that maybe nobody else does is... How to not intimidate the other person. Like, if you're a girl, like, not to intimidate the guy to not date you. Or because of how much you love them or whatever the situation is. Like, literally in sixth grade. Sixth grade. 
I had a boyfriend that broke up with me because they didn't, they, they didn't want to get hurt. I've had all guys be like in love with me, right? But because they fall in love with me so quickly, they get scared that they're going to get hurt really, 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 really bad if something happens. Every boyfriend. I actually was going through my attic, um, and I found all these notes from my my uh, high school sweetheart, and they were saying, like, I'm so sorry if it looks like I'm, like, ignoring you, like, I'm really not, I'm just thinking about what I want to do, because I really don't want to get hurt, and, like, blah, 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 and I'm just like, dude, like, so, <laughs> if you are too intense, or you feel like you love so hard that that's what actually drives people away, we're gonna work on that. <laughs> If I've learned so much. Oh my god. Okay. So. Alright. Let's do this. So. I think I covered everything. As much as I could. Because. He came in. And something happened earlier. Another crazy thing. And I was like, dude, I can't do this right now, but I gotta tell you something. And he's like, is it bad? I'm like, it's ridiculous. And he's like, what is it? And then I told him and it like totally caught me off guard. I'm just like, yo, like this is, rid this is so ridiculous. Like eclipse season. Hey, like at least it's not Mercury retrograde and eclipse season. Oh my God. My Mercury retrograde too. That's when I was going through Wellbutrin. Like you have, <laughs> oh my God. What was happening yesterday? Something, no, no, it was Saturday. Like, last Saturday, Saturday, I don't know. Like, I'm texting my kid, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. I can't believe it's happening. Like, da 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 Kind of like the same situation that happened today. The same people. And, um, <laughs> I'm just like, it's the planets. We're in eclipse season. And he's just like, doesn't answer me. He's like, I love you. <laughs> Good night. And I'm like, yeah. Okay. So, we're going to do childhood trauma, too. And a lot a lot, 2222, love that. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of inner child work. That's what needs to be done. You need to learn how to reparent your inner child. Everything that you did not get and you were neglected of, you're going to learn how to do for yourself. And you're going to learn how to not have the fear of abandonment because when you're taking care of your needs, you're not looking for somebody else to do it. So when you're not abandoning yourself of what you need and putting yourself first besides somebody else, you won't be scared of abandonment because you got you you got yourself. You don't need somebody else to fulfill what you needed fulfilled as a kid. Like you don't we put our faith and our trust and our happiness in other people. But when you don't get that person, you're relying on them for it. And it's like, no, no. Because you want them to fulfill your needs that you needed done when you were a kid. You want them to love you like you felt neglected of not having love as a kid. Because it's like, then you have it. And that's where, like, the fear of abandonment come from. And twin flames also. And, you know, BPD. Like, there's just so, there's so many things. But, like, abandonment... It's a big thing. And it's in a lot of personality mental disorders. A lot. A lot. So, I think I'm going to end it here. Be Bruce. Thanks, Sam. Yeah. So, I'm going to end it here. And see where this goes. So, welcome to You Are Not Broken. Because you're not. It's court belief. And you have to realize, too, your inner child, okay? You were a child when you were a kid, okay? When you could have felt neglected, it could have been your mother or father working nights to provide for their family, for you to eat. You know what I mean? So it's like we grow up with that neglection and we attract it. Chaos attracts chaos. That's me. Like, I, I learned that too. Like, that was me. Like, I got out of a healthy relationship and it was, got too serious and 
it wasn't familiar, so I self-sabotaged it and went and dated, like, like, the kid I left told me that he tried coke once, and I used it as, this is my escape, and went and lived in a crack house, sold crack, did coke. No, I really didn't actually do it, I actually, like, I don't know, I, I'm not gonna say that, I don't remember. I learned how to cook it, sell it, lived in a crack house. Like, there was a kid in there, he was fucking huge, huge guy, and he, like, threw refrigerators out the, like, window. Like, I went from that to that in a split second. It had a lot to do with sex, too, but, you know, I'm, I'm impulsive. I, I was impulsive with that because, you know, certain things that you have that you're told you have, you know, and your chemical brain and... You know, it just happens, but we're going to reverse that because you're not broken. You're loved. Very much so. So just nurture your inner child. Try to think of what you were neglected of or what you feel like you were neglected of, even if you weren't, but it still felt like you were. You know, like you could have thought somebody, it, anything, it could be the littlest thing that you would never think of. But it affected you that much as a child. And you brought that with you as you grew up. Like, you could have trust issues from nobody really giving you a reason to. It could have been your parents. But, you know, you bring that with you. And it's hard for us to um, have certain relationships sometimes. I mean, you look at people and they really do have healthy marriages and kids together and stuff. And then you look at other ones and you're like, you know, but we're going to go through that and we're going to heal those relationships and I'm going to teach you why we do that and, you know, just don't be in denial and be open to this, okay? Um, I really want to help you guys. I, I've done a lot of work on myself, a lot. My, my goal in life is literally to be a better person every day and learn something about myself that I can heal and be better and be more authentic, okay? Especially so I can help other people because they might not know how to do what I went through and how I learned how to do it. You know, I literally feel like I was put on this earth to go, well, as an earth angel, but... And so many other things, but to literally go through a bunch of fucking shit in order to heal it, in order to help people. I swear to God, I have a feeling and there's been certain things where I've been confirmed on that. So you're welcome. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was going to say something, but I forgot. And this is going to cut off because my, I'm not going to say it, but my phone really does do it. And that's another thing when you see it happening it's hard for you to believe it's not true and try to reprogram your subconscious, and we're going to go through that as well. Um, you have to more believe in the unknown of what you don't see rather than what you're consciously, consciously seeing, and that's the trick. Wow. <laughs> so, anyways, um, yeah, let's get authentic. Let's be our best versions of ourselves. It's going to be fun. I was going to say something, but... Oh, I think it was about my phone or something and the belief or whatever. But the reason why we believe it is because it's happening, but we're attracting it. Especially when we keep saying, you, you keep believing it. Like, you're like, oh, I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, because you attracted it to happen. You know, you're thinking about somebody and they call you. You attracted that person. But anyways, you guys have a good night. I don't know if I'm doing another video or if I'm doing something for my other channel, um, which I can tell you guys about if you are interested. But right now, my dog is having like nightmares, dreams, or whatever, and I have to wake him up. So have a good night. I will see you guys on the flip side. Whatever. Bye.